Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, you're a content creator. Well, these are all the text settings that you should know. One of the great things about working in Adobe applications is how many of them share the same text settings, same type settings, uh, kerning, letting, justification, and all of those things. Other applications like uh, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, um, there are similarities, definitely, and, and almost all of them are the same, but the you, Adobe really fine tunes those. And it doesn't matter if you're strictly a video editor, you need to understand all the options you have when creating text. I don't care if you watch a film, television, or indie stuff on YouTube, you're going to see text and uh, you should learn about those settings. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna explore all the settings that I think are important in learning to work with text or type. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm choosing Photoshop. Uh, a lot of the same settings are, are in other Adobe applications. And I'm just gonna click with my type tool and start typing. And let me just change the color of this so we can see it. So I just created three words in a type box. And you can see when I click and add type, it adds all three of them together. And these are set to center justification. Okay, the first term is understanding justification. And this is called alignment in many other different applications. And this is how the text is aligned on the screen. And I've got a very good tutorial about if you're using Google Docs or Microsoft Word to create credits before you bring them into Premiere Pro. So you have three options Generally speaking, I mean, this, this is Photoshop. There are a few more in After Effects and Premiere Pro, but it's either left justified, center justified, or right justified. And you can see up at the top, the three different choices. Right now it's center, that's left, and that's right justified. What's important to understand about many of these settings is they're paragraph based, meaning that when you hit a carriage return, so in between the word top and in the word middle, those are considered two completely separate paragraphs. So if I just place my cursor in the middle where it says middle and choose left justify, that means the middle word is left justified, the top is center justified, and the bottom is also center justified. You would never want to do this. I just want to alert you to the fact that when you are changing paragraph settings, you need to select all of the paragraphs. So let me select that all again, and I'm going to choose right justified. And one of the first rules about legibility, and this is absolutely important, when you're trying to read something on the screen is how things line up. And if your eye has to go to the left-hand side, and we're talking about um, Western languages here, you go to the left-hand side, start reading, go to the end, and you go back to the left. If the left is a straight line, it's easier to read. This is very not so much for, for um, headlines or, or large type, but definitely for more than, say, five lines, it's much easier. That being said, sometimes, type needs to be broken up into two separate paragraphs and aligned correctly. Now, let me just show you this. I'm gonna take this off of italic right now because I wanna show more of the justification on the side. If I duplicate this and justify this one left, look at how these line up. And if I had many, many, many of these, they would actually line up easier. So it, it makes reading these together easier. This is a great option when you have very long credits as I have in my uh, credit tutorial. Okay, so that's just creating, that's justification. Now let's talk about, let me go back to center. Let's talk about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a different typeface here just to uh, make it more typical of text, okay. All right, so in between each one of these characters, and I'm, I've set my cursor, and I'm moving my cursor by hitting the left and right arrow, same thing on Mac or Windows. When you have the, the cursor between two letters, 
if you hold the Alt key on Windows option on Mac and now hit the same left and right arrows, you're kerning the type. Kerning is the distance between two characters. Monospaced type, like you would get on a typewriter, is the exact same spacing over again. And sometimes you'll see the name of a typeface called mono, meaning that the kerning really doesn't matter because they're forcing it together. But when it's uh, spaced correctly like this, there's actually kerning pairs in the font information so that it knows between uh, two uppercase T's that have a lot of space, they need more room than two lowercase uh, L's that are, are uh, together. But you can uh, uh, move these around and control completely where they are. In fact, if I keep going, I can put that O right over top of the T. It's still the word top, it's just the kerning is so whacked. Okay, so that's kerning. And if you want to see the controls for this, the controls on the right hand side are in these pop-ups. In Photoshop, this button also brings them up so that you can see them. So while I'm kerning this, you can see that value directly in there. You can use that pop-up value. You can also click and drag that number and move that around. Okay, now if you have a word selected or multiple words selected, hold the same Alt and Windows option on Mac and now move left and right, you're changing the tracking. You can have tracking and kerning in the same word. Tracking is cool. In After Effects, you can actually animate tracking and you've seen this a million times in titles where it will start normally spaced, and then the, the title will track wider, wider, wider. It's a very, very cool, slick effect. Um, unfortunately, you can't do this in Premiere Pro yet, because although there is tracking, it's not animatable. Okay. All right. So those are the big ones there, tracking and kerning. I also want to talk about adding text. When you just click and place the cursor and start typing, it keeps going on and on, and you have to hit the carriage return to start another line and more text. So every time I want to go to another line, I'm hitting the enter button or the return button to get another um, line. This is okay for a small amount of text, but if you have a large block of text that you're formatting, that maybe you want to change the spacing then this is the wrong format. This is just freeform text. I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'll grab the type tool and click and drag out. And this is very typical to a lot of uh, Adobe's programs. And now I'll paste in my text. And you'll see the text is now inside that block of text. If I move my cursor to the side and drag around, you'll see as I it starts to reflow the text. Very nice. If I select all the text and increase the size, and for this, I'm using the Control Shift on Windows, Command Shift on Mac, the uh, greater than, less than buttons, and you can change that. Actually, this is the same for Google Docs and Microsoft Word. It stays within that box. One thing to notice about Photoshop that if you have the, the uh, show transform controls on, and if you change the text this way, you're actually changing the scale. So you see how the letters get wider or they get thinner. I'm going to undo that. So to change that, you have to make sure your cursor is in the text, and then you can choose this and move that around. Okay, letting. Let's call up our type controls. And letting is the distance between the lines. This might be called line spacing in other applications. This is also a paragraph format. So right now it's set to auto, which is usually about 120% of the font size. So if your font size is um, 20 points, then it's going to be 1.2 times that size of spacing. And that's usually uh, a good format. I'll select the text and you can change the, the letting 
by choosing this value, by dragging to the left of this number, or using Alt, down arrow, up arrow on Windows, Option, up arrow, down arrow on Mac. And this changes the letting size. Okay, so that's how you justify the text. That's how you keep it within a box or free form and track and current. Let me show you another one that's really cool. Let me clear all of that out of there. I'm gonna grab some more text. And I'm going to choose Ansel Sands Bold. Let me make this large. All caps on. I'm going to put a return in there, the table. Right now the letting is way off because it's the last value. I'll put this back on auto. Okay, next I wanna show you baseline shifting. And this is pretty cool. This allows us to take the baseline and whenever you have a character, the baseline is, is right along the bottom of each one of those characters. So I have two, um, two paragraphs here. So I put a return in after the word on. So on, I'm going to make a little smaller. So I'm gonna make this 55. And you'll see that the letting doesn't work anymore. So I'm holding, I'm going to select the bottom and now I'm holding Alt down arrow, Option down arrow on the Mac. Okay, and if you add shift to the arrow left and right, you're selecting the type. So now I'm selecting the word table and I want that much larger. And I can start kerning that T, move that over, maybe the E a little bit, and the H, and here's baseline shifting. I'm going to select the letter E. I'm gonna make this the same as, as the word the, so I'll make this 80, and it kind of looks sad there. So I'm holding Alt, Shift on Windows, Option, Shift on Mac, up arrow. Although this looks like letting, it's not. It's baseline shifting. Now I'll move to the left arrow and I'll kern this backwards. Place that in there, maybe bring it down a little bit. And this whole block of text is one block of text. The word on is smaller with a return, the word the is larger, Table, T-A-B-L is larger and E is the same as the E in the, but it's all together in one using those settings. If I go over those settings, so if I click on the on, you can see there's the, the oops, go all the way up. You can see the type size 55 and the lettings 26. If we go down to the T-A-G, it's 80 with 65 um, letting over to table, 65 uh, points, and, and 144. And then when we get over to the letter E, that one is 80, and the baseline shifting right there, that number 38 points moves it up. So it's all there together. So just the fonts that I'm using are part of Typekit. And if you're a Creative Cloud user, you have a Typekit account, you should be going there to use them because they're amazing. They're beautiful. I love Type Foundries. Foundries are the companies that make type. And these are just type nerds where they'll create the best, most gorgeous looking type. And there's longtime companies that they've been around forever. Companies like Emigre, uh, companies like uh, House. Oh yeah, House fonts are crazy. And uh, Paratype and P22 Type Foundry. These are really great foundries and many others. Those are just a few that I, I've picked out. But you should be checking out um, all the stuff here on Typekit and use that not just in Photoshop, but you can use this in any application you're running on your computer. You can use these type fonts because they load into your system. And you get 100 fonts that you can load at any one time as part of your Creative Cloud 
account. So those are some essential type controls that I really believe are important to understand because maybe you're creating a project and you're sending it out and there, there is someone who understands type on the other end and they ask you to change the letting. And instead of you Googling the letting and understand, boom, you already know what the letting is and you know how to control it and change it and the exact number to reuse. All right. If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description on the front of the page, one-time uh, donation or a monthly donation, donation like our many PayPal supporters who we love deeply. Thank you so much for helping us out. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you and your tight looking.